This is video number two for module one of Access in the Shelley Cashman book on Microsoft Office 365. We're starting on page 1 24. We're going to create a table in Design View. We've already done that with the previous table, so this will be pretty familiar, but we're creating a new table this time. So we want to go to Create, choose Table Design, and it'll take us straight into the Design View. On the middle page 1-24, we've got the list of field names and the data types. And it looks like the data type is going to be short text for all of them. So let's go ahead and type those in. Short text should be the default. If short text comes up in the data type field, all you have to do is hit tab once to get to the description field. And then one more time to get down to the field for the next name. So let's start typing them in. Okay, we've got them all typed in now. Right click to the left of the patient ID field name and choose primary key. Okay, one of the things that is done in databases is every table has to have a unique identifier. And that unique identifier is called a primary key. The fact that it's unique means it can only occur once in the table. So every patient is going to have a different ID number. We can't have two patients with the same ID numbers. That's basically what a primary key is. And to let you know that that's the primary key field, Access draws a little image of a key right here next to the patient ID. So we've established that as our identifier. Now let's go ahead and let's do a save. Click on the save button up here. Once to know what our table name is going to be, our table name is going to be patients. Go ahead and hit enter. Now we're at the bottom of page 1-25. We want to click the view button. Here's our view button on the top left. Click on the down arrow here. And we've got data sheet view and design view. We're currently in design view. You can see the pink outline there. And we want data sheet view. So go ahead and click on data sheet view. This is the view that you're going to use if you want to enter data. So we're going to enter the data at the bottom of page 1 25. Okay, when you finish that, we can flip over to page 1 26 and close the table. Click on the X up here on the tab and the table is now closed. Now we're in the middle of page 1-26. We want to resize columns on a data sheet. So we're going to open this in data sheet view. And that's the default if you choose open. And we want to resize the columns just like we did with the uh, customers table. So go to the border between the column headings up here, double click, and it'll make every column just as wide as it needs to be. Go ahead and close the table by clicking on the X up here on the Patients tab. And yes, we do want to save the design changes so that the column widths will be the same next time as they are right now. Now let's go to the bottom page 1-26. We want to import additional Access Database tables. So if you have some tables that are in another database, you can import them into Access. Uh, and you can not only import Access tables, you can import tables from other applications as well and one of the most common imports might be from excel so let's do number one at the bottom of page 1-26 open the database file support ac cmf that's extra tables from the data files and save it to the storage location specified by your instructor we've already got that it's in the same folder with all the other files for this textbook so we can skip over number one we want to open the cmf vets database which we currently have open you can check the title up here and then we want to click on external data up here. We want to click on new data source. We're going to get it from a database. We're going to get it from an access database. And you can see there's a bunch of options here for importing data from other sources. Now click on browse. Go to your Shelley Cashman folder. Access module one should be the very first folder here. Double click on that. Double click on this. And the one we want is CMF VETS Extra Table. So double click on that. Down below, we've got two choices. We could link to that data or we can just import it, which involves making a copy of it in this database. And that's the one we want to do. So make sure this is selected and then click on OK. And then you can flip over to page 1-28. So here's our Import Objects dialog box. And we can tell it what we want to import. We want to select all of the tables. We've got uh, things other than tables that could be imported. Uh, this particular one only has tables. Let's do a select all here. 
and let's click on OK. We don't need to save the import steps. Go ahead and click on Close. And we see three more tables exist now over here on the left hand side. Now let's go to page 1 29. There's no point in having a database unless you can easily get the data out of it that you want. And the way that data is extracted from a database is by using something called a query. Query just means question. And queries have a specific language called structured query language. And that is almost always abbreviated SQL. And some people make that into a word and they call it the word SQL. So let's go to the bottom of page 1 29. We're going to create a SQL query here, but we don't need to learn SQL. That's what the wizard does. We tell it what we want, and it creates a SQL query for us behind the scenes. This is our navigation pane over here. It says if this is closed, what to do, but it should be open. If necessary, click the Owners table to select it. Let's click the Owners table. Click Create. We've got two options here for queries. Query Wizard is the easy way. Once you get used to doing this, though, Query Design is probably a better way to do it. Click on Query Wizard. Flip over to page 1-30. We want Simple Query Wizard. Go ahead and click on OK. We have a number of fields we want to add to this. We, we can just double click on them. You need to click on them here and click on the arrow. Or you can select all the fields and hit the double arrow. We don't want all of them. So I'm going to double click on first name. That will bring it over. Uh, the other ones we want are last name, street, city, state, and postal code. So the other fields we want are last name. So double click on that. Street city state and postal code when we've got all those selected and moved over to the right side here go ahead and click on next the default name for this is the table name followed by the word query and go ahead and click the finish button it will execute the query and we will see a list here of the owner first name last name street city state and postal code extracted from the owner's table so this is everything from the owner's table. We've only got two records out there, remember, and we're pulling everything out, but we did not select all of the columns to pull out. So we just selected these six columns, and those are the ones that we get. The other data is still there. We just decided that we didn't want to see it. Okay, the next part is on creating forms. A form is simply a pretty way of inputting your data. You can do the same thing with a data sheet if you want to, by opening the table in data sheet view, that is. But if you want to make it a little more user friendly for somebody to use, we can uh, also add a form. So let's go to top page 1 32. We want to select the owners table in the navigation pane. It's still selected. We want to go up to our create tab up here and we want to click on form. By default, it will create this form for us. It makes all of the fields the same width. So you end up with some really wide fields here. And we see some controls down here at the bottom. We've got some arrow controls that let us move forwards and backwards through the table. We've only got two records here, so there's not much navigation to do. Let's go ahead and click the Save button when we're done. That indicates that we're done creating the form. So go ahead and click on Save up here. We're going to call this Owner's Form, so just put a space and then the word Form on the end. Go ahead and click on OK. Go ahead and click on the X up here to close the form. Click on the X up here to close the query. And the last part that we're going to take a look at is creating a report. So a report is a report is probably going to be a printout of some of the data that's in your table or possibly in multiple tables combined. So at the top of page 1-34, be sure the owner's table is selected in the navigation pane. It is. Click Create up here again. We're going to do a report. The reports are over here. We want the report wizard. With a wizard, you get this step-by-step -step process where you can go through and basically just answer questions, and the end result is what you wanted, which in this case is a report. So we want owner first name. You can either click on it and use there, or you can just double-click. I'm going to double-click on the ones that we want here. We want last name, street, city, state. When we've got those five fields over here in the selected box, go ahead and click on Next. We don't need to do anything right here, so we'll go ahead and click on Next. Flip over to page 1-36. We will leave them in ascending order. Click on Next. And then we've got some options here for our layout. My options are not the same as his are on page 1-36. Instead of choosing Stepped, we're going to choose Columnar. If you click on these buttons here, it does give you kind of a little preview of what it's going to look like. So that's what a table would look like. 
and this is what justified looks like columnar looks closest to what he has on page 1-36 that's the one we're going to choose click next to move to the next screen of the report wizard what do we want to call the report we want to call it owner's report so simply add the word report onto the end of the name here the preview of the report button should be turned on it'll give us a preview of the report go ahead click on finish then and this is what a report is going to look like and that brings us to the end of access module one